All right, so I'm back with Justin, man. Last time we did a video, it was over Damn. two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. But now I'm here to talk to Justin yeah. about what he got going on now. Well, first of all, introduce yourself. Man. Yeah. So Justin P, what I specialize in is helping people start or scale their digital or physical product businesses. So I've been able and fortunate to scale both sides of those businesses to multiple millions of dollars. And now I'm just here to give away as much game as possible for free and help as many people get in the game. Multiple millions of dollars. This man is too humble checked out his career. <laughs> Ooh, it's insane. And I like how you add and rate use of all of these. So you got to. It, it's these windows, you got all of your notes on. Right, whenever my brain just get the going, I'm just like, oh, I gotta, you know, just get it out, so. First things first, most people who watch the channel, they're either beginner, they're intermediate, they're some advanced cats on there. Yeah. Like, what, what's the best way someone should start yeah. and possibly even scale from like, you know, with a minimal amount of funds? Yeah. Minimal funds, if you're just starting out, the biggest thing that you can do, in my opinion, is utilize self-awareness, bro. That's the one big mistake that I made that cost me the most money and the most pain is because I was building a business that I thought was the right thing to do. I thought it looked cool. I thought it was dope. And I had a 8,000 square foot warehouse and 30 employees and all of this stuff. But you see what I'm good at. I'm good at content, create content creation, brand awareness, et cetera. Like that's my thing but I built a business that didn't allow me to be in those strengths at all times. So if you're just getting started, the biggest move you can make is asking yourself, what are your strengths and weaknesses? And then look at all the different business models that are there. And you got print on demand, you got Etsy, you got do it yourself, you got, you know, cut and sew drops. Like you can do a bunch of stuff in this game and make money, but you have to be operating in a space that lends itself to your strengths and not your weaknesses. That's number one. And then number two, if you don't got a you know a ton of cash to get started, it's really simple. It's like the things that you need. It's simple. You need a website, a good website, right? You can learn how to do that from your page. I'm assuming a bunch of free YouTube videos. Number two, some good creative. You can get that from viral ecom ads, bands off ads, billow.app, um, broll.io. Get a good piece of creative made, and then run ads to it like and if you don't have to run ads too you can make organic content if you really want to so more of the story is three things that you're going to need when you're just getting started is a website a product and creative very simple and there's a few ways that we talked about how you can find each one of those things yeah i love the self-awareness because i think a lot of people also got to be self-aware of the amount of time that they have yeah. like i know i put out content that literally goes over everything right but you can't do everything whenever you first start off. Yeah. People think they have 40 hours within the extra two hours they got in a day. Right. So being self-aware of what you're good at and then like the amount of time that you have available. Yeah. So being able to focus on that. And then for you, you're saying they should create content. But like, what about people who struggle and get on their face? On yeah. I, I run across a lot of people. It's like, oh, I don't want to record myself. How do you overcome that? I'm the same way. Because <laughs> despite what it may look like now, you knew me back when, or you still know me, but you knew me back then. I was like, I'm a businessman. I don't create content. Like it was out of the norm for me to reach out to you and do content. I didn't do it at all. So there's a few ways that you can get around that. Number one, utilizing places, like I said, B-roll, Billow, you can pay other people to make the content for you. Then two, you can send your products to influencers like TikTokers, Instagrammers, et cetera, and get them to make content for you so you don't have to, or just don't show your face in any other content as well. Well, one of my closest friends, he's doing like six, $700,000 a month. And on all of his content, it's just like him holding his shoes and his products and his, his garments and whatnot. He never shows his face. So it's just, it's a myth thinking that you have to show your face to be able to make money. You don't, you just have to know how to make good content without it. But you probably can make more money if you do show your face, but if you don't, you won't not make money. You just have to know how to do it the right way. I see. So you dealt multiple millions of dollars and you help people make multiple right. millions of dollars. What, are, what do you think, like coming to this coaching game, what, what do you think is the biggest issue for most people? I finally figured it out, bro, what the biggest issue is. The biggest issue is, is people don't have an eye for quality. And what I mean by that is people come into the game thinking that their idea is the best idea. My logo is great. My idea is perfect. My product is beautiful. Right. And in reality, if it hasn't sold a ton, the market is telling you that it's not that good. They come into the game thinking that they're the best when in reality, they don't understand what a website looks like when it's doing 10, 20, $30 million a year. They don't understand what a product that can produce that much money looks like as well. So the way that I look at it now, when you're coaching, 
is it's a journey that you have to take people on. And I kind of like talk about it like a movie. So it's like, if I'm in a movie and I need to save the princess, the journey that I'm going on is me saving the princess and then I win. But the real journey that the hero goes on is the person that they become as they save the princess. And that's the whole real journey that they go on, the trials and tribulations, how they get through it and whatnot. So the way I look at it in the coaching space is, this person thinks their goal is to go from zero to 5K a month, zero to 10K a month. But the real goal for them is to gain all of the skills that it takes to actually be able to produce that. And they don't understand that because they don't see it. And it's partially because people market, you know, just saying, hey, I'll teach you how to make 10K in two minutes. Then they don't actually share the real, you know, what it really takes. So I think that's the biggest side of the- Imagine, I love that. I, I was relating myself back to as a kid, like when I was playing the very first Super Mario, yeah. there's a way you can skip the first stage and get to the last stage, mm -hmm. but you gotta be a little bit more skilled to understand how the game works to beat that last stage. Yep. But if you play from the first stage all the way to the last stage, yeah. then you know you get a little bit better, so you're more prepared when it comes to exactly. time, save the princess. Exactly. So, so I love that, man. All right, so I see this in the comments a lot. I know I get it in a lot of comments. You probably get it in yours as well. Yeah. I think it's like a little bit of a self doubt, and you know, it's like there's like there's no way this cat's doing <laughs> X amount of dollars a week. There's there's no way this person's making this much a month. Like, like, how do you feel about that? How do you get that out of them? Yeah. So. The thing is, is that it's fair, right? Because when I grew up, I didn't think that, I never saw nobody doing that, right? I didn't think that it was possible. So I kind of operate with empathy when I see that. And it's like, all right, you just haven't seen it yet. My mentor always told me this is like, you can only aspire to the level that you're exposed to. Mm -hmm. So what I just try to do is just continue to expose people to what I'm doing, show them the back end, show them everything that's realistically going on so that they can now see, oh, it is possible. And then they can now aspire to actually want to do it. So, you know, you always gonna have your trolls here and there. We treat them with empathy because they're going through something so bad that they want to come somewhere positive and spread negativity. I feel bad for you. And then for those that are looking to be, you know, aspire or looking to be, we just expose them so that they can aspire to what they haven't seen before. Absolutely. All right. What about the next step up? We got someone who believes it mm -hmm. and then they keep hitting this brick wall, this, yeah. wall, this brick wall. And then they're starting to get more and more discouraged. They're coming back down the ladder and then like they're, they're starting to lose hope. Yeah. Like, like, where do you go from there? Do you think it's the information? Do you think it's the mentality? What do you think it is? It's it's really, it's the information, number one. And I'm glad that you said that because mentor told me this. He was like, you know, if you feel hopeless or you feel sad, it's not because you're a bad person. It's because you lack a piece of information, which is now a lot making you lack options because you aren't able to create a million dollars, let's say. So now you're sad but there is information that is attached to you being able to make a million dollars you just don't know it so you feel like you don't have options which is making you hopeless which is making you sad but if you instead of looking at it like oh i'm sad i'm depressed i'm upset and you look at it as i do not have the information that is allowing me to be able to create this outcome you can actually change that so i think that if someone is in a place where they feel like they're sad they're upset they're hitting a brick wall or whatever don't be upset. Don't be sad about it. Realize that you're feeling that way because you don't have a piece of information. And that's something that you can change if you go seek out the information or find someone that has it themselves and then you apply it. So, right. So, so going back to the beginning here and then being realistic, it's like I was saying, a lot of people only have a few amount of hours every day. So like what balance do you think someone should focus on information yeah. or like executing on? Because you know, I, I think you and I both see how many people just get trapped into information. Yeah. So I always say that is like one thing you want to avoid is you don't want to be addicted to information and allergic to execution. So what I put in place for myself, is something I call the one to one ratio. So if I spend an hour learning, I spend an hour executing. Or if I spend three hours studying, I spend three hours executing. So I just do a one to one. So I'm never overloading on information. I'm never, you know, overloading on execution as well. So yeah, I mean, that's the way that I kind of get around it. As I study, I execute. You execute. Yeah. So as soon as someone hops up this video, they should be putting something to work. What do you think is actionable for someone, um, no matter where they are in this business after this? I think actionable is first things first, especially if they're a beginner, sit with yourself and be like, what type of entrepreneur am I? Where do I see myself going? And what skills do I have? And then what 
business model fits those skills. And then now that you have those skills, or you now that you know what business model you want to do, you go watch the rest of all of your videos. And I know that you've explained all of the ways to do print on demand and drop shipping or whatever it is, everything. And then they just go and learn from that specific topic. Because people keep, this is what they do, bro. They they stay in what I call like the liability loop. Right. Like hey, you go and learn something, you get excited about it. You try it out for three months. You don't get any results. You get sad. You go and learn something else. You get excited about it. You don't try it. So it just keeps going like that because they never stay focused enough, long enough on one thing. So the actionable thing here is realize that, step back, pick one business model, find someone who has gotten the results that you want and follow them and do what they say for at least six to 12 months, bare minimum. The right. only difference between me and anyone else that's you know not successful is I've been doing the same thing for 12 years straight. One thing, 12 years. It would be very unrealistic for anybody to go apply this information for 10 years straight and then not be successful. Right. Now I see it. Very unrealistic. I think this also relates back to, because I, I remember seeing a lot of comments the first time we spoke, and then there was one thing we were talking about is that a lot of people, they, they, they go on the internet and they're seeking answers for things. They don't even have the questions for you. Yeah. And you, you should be putting in the work starting off and then it's like, oh, how do I find out this product? Then you got the question we're supposed to go look for right. instead of just soaking the information. Yeah, that's why the execution is so important. They find the information, they never execute on it. And that's where analysis paralysis comes in. And you're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. And this is what I find. That's why I say even finding a mentor, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's me, you, someone for free around. I don't care. Just find somebody that has been where you want to go right. and then lock in with them because this is what's going to happen. You're going to start getting information from YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. This person saying something, that person saying something different. That dude saying that this dude's a liar. Who do you trust? <laughs> and then you're like, all right, now I'm confused because there's so much different information. And then now I'm overwhelmed because there's so much information coming from so many places. So what does a confused mind do? They do absolutely nothing. Yeah. So you end up feeling hopeless because you have so much information. So what I did when I first got started was I, st I stood back and I said, I was on YouTube for free. I said, bro, who on here has done what I want to do and has recent results, student testimonials, and has gotten the result that I personally want for myself. Recently, I found one person, his name is King Kong. He actually passed away a few years ago. And I said, I'm gonna watch what he does and I'm not gonna listen to anyone else. And I'm gonna watch his videos and immediately apply it right after. I did that and I made a couple thousand dollars. Then I took a couple thousand dollars and he had a hundred dollar coaching call. I gave him a hundred dollars for a coaching call and I was able to learn Facebook ads from him. That quadrupled my revenue. Right. And I was like, all right, cool. Now I can go and buy a thousand dollar course here, thousand dollar course there, $25,000 courses now of what I've been able to do. So when people start to ask like, oh, what does it cost for the mentorship? What does it cost for the program? What does it cost for the course? What does it cost to watch all of these videos, my time, whatever? I'm like, bro, ask yourself a better question. What does it cost you not to do it? Because if you watch this video and you do nothing about it, and then in a year from now, you're still in the same place, it costs you too damn much. Right. So that's why I think like, you know, I don't care who it is, but find a mentor because they're coming back with the package information that you can go and just buy back all of their like their mistakes. Right. And then immediately go past them. So Yeah, I don't think a lot of people don't understand the power of like mentorship or coaching. Cause like one thing, just one word alone pretty much changes everything for me is accountability. Like a lot of people come on here, they get the information, but they don't have someone tell you like the same way you go to the jail. Like yeah, everyone's been to the jail, they slack off, they fall off and they're like, maybe I need a coach. And then the coach is going to check in on you every single day, making sure you're eating the right things, making sure you're doing the right things. Same thing happens when it comes to business. Like if no one's checking in on you to make sure you're doing these things, then you're probably not going to see the right results. Yeah, that's a fact. And the, the crazy thing that I, uh, I heard about, I don't know where I heard this from. It was like a week or two ago. And people don't realize like they don't realize how bad they need a coach or need just guidance or even a friend group. I don't care what it is, but it's like this, your mouth is directly under your nose. But if your breath stinks, you don't really know that. Right. You, and it's this far away from your nose. So you can be operating, doing the wrong thing your whole life and be right there from the identifying it. 
but you needed someone else to be able to identify and be like, hey, bro, your breath stink, fam. Go ahead, get that fixed. So that's why coaching, mentorship, et cetera, is so important too, because it's like, you can be doing something blatantly wrong and not even know it. And you literally just needed somebody outside of you just to be like, bro, that's wrong. Right. That's been somewhere that you want to go. And that I always say it like this too, is like, it's very difficult to read the label when you're inside the bottle. You're so busy operating inside of your life, you can't see everything that's going on on the outside. And you need someone that's been there to identify it for you. Yeah, this uh, this just reminds me, because Threads is a new thing, yep. the new app. The first thing I posted on there was, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. Yep. A lot of these guys got the information, everything that they need, but they're wrong, the, the wrong group of friends. Yep. They're not, they're not there to tell them, oh, this is the wrong piece of information. This is the wrong thing that you're doing. Yeah. So you gotta just, man, you gotta humble yourself down and like <laughs> go to places where like, yeah, I feel dumb as hell. <laughs> that, that should be the goal. Because the funny thing about it is that it never stops being that. That's what entrepreneurship is. You become the smallest fish in the, in the bigger pond every single time. And my mentor always told me, he was like, you know, if you're the smartest person in your circle, you're not in the circle, you're in a cage. It's because you're just caged to that level of thinking because you think that you're the greatest and you need to seek actively to be in higher rooms and bigger places where people are much smarter than you because you're forced to become good. It's a crazy analogy. I, I didn't realize it till a little while ago. It's like when you're a baby, you crawl around and whatnot, right? And then when you walk, this is what most people do. It's funny. They new entrepreneurs, they're like babies in business, right? They get up and they walk a little bit and then they fall. And then they like, bro, this is not for me. So imagine if a baby was walking and it was like, nah, bro, I'm cool on this walking stuff. I fell one time, I'm good. And they stopped, it wouldn't make any sense. But the reason why babies keep continuing to walk is because they see adults around them that are walking and they start to model the behavior that they see around them and people that are further along in life than them. So it's the same thing with new entrepreneurs. You gotta get around people that are adults in business or walking and striding and running in business so you can at least just model because the thing is that a uh, adult will not not let a baby route walk. It, you, they won't let you not walk. So that's really important. And then the other thing important that's important that you said was accountability too. And when you were growing up, did you want to brush your teeth? No, I didn't, right? Your mom made you brush your teeth though, right? right. Now that you're an adult, you brush your teeth every day, right? Yeah. Well, that's what accountability is. Having you do something that you don't want to do that you, we know is going to be good for you to make it a habit. So when you go through life doing it, your life is much better than if you didn't do it. And if you don't have that, then you'll most of the time you just go back to the ways that you're used to. So. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to leave it with this. How does one get into the right circle? Like they, they've been so used to being in the wrong places yeah. all the time. They're from a small city. And they, they, they had the point where it's like, I don't know the next step. I don't know. How does how does one get to that right group? Yeah. Luckily, we got the Internet. Thank God. So any forums, any I go to conferences all the time. Get out of your comfort zone. Go to a conference. Get into a, a forum, a group chat, a thread or whatever of people that are doing something that you want to do. Start your own if you have to get into a book club, do anything, anything that you can. That's, I didn't know anybody. Like when I first started Le legitimately, the way that I did this was I saw a influencer post on his story and it was a book. And I said, bro, if people like him are reading books, I might just need to read a book then. I picked up that book. I bought it for $9 and then I read it. And then from there, I started to reach out to people on Twitter and Instagram of like actively talking about, oh, they read or, oh, they want to be a CEO or oh, they want to be whatever. And I just made those people my friends. And then I literally moved my environment. I was in Houston, Texas, where things were not going really well for me. And a lot of people, especially these newer people, are like that. You are good seed, but you're in bad soil. You're a rose, but you're in the desert with the people that you're around. And if you just simply took that seed and then put it one other place and then planted it, you will grow exponentially. Basically, the answer to that question is take yourself out of the place that you are if you need to, and then put yourself in a better environment, a digital environment, which you're reading, consuming, things of that nature, and also your physical environment too, because they both shape who you become. Love it, man. Yeah. Sounds like I need to join the book. <laughs> Me too. Bro. Like I might be Asian, but I'm like, I'm in. I'm in the, so. You make money though, so you good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, it's so hard for me to read, bro. I get like do one paragraph. I'm like, God, damn, what, what, what did I just read? Audio books, you good, bro. Audio books, <laughs> that's right. The only time I read a book, too. <laughs> so audio books, I'm going to join a book club. I'm going to change my... And the thing about changing your surroundings, too, is see, a lot of people don't know this, but like I'm growing my YouTube channel, like growing my personal brand, but I'm like the most introverted person yeah. you can ever meet. Like mm -hmm. I have social anxiety. There's some videos where my voice is shaking because it's a new collaboration. Yeah. Bro, when, the more you get uncomfortable, You'll probably never ever like get used to it, yeah. but like it's easier for you to take that one step. In. Bro, literally, mentor told me this changed my life. He said, "To enter the land of the phenomenal, you have to leave the land of the familiar." Ugh. And everybody wants to stay familiar. Oh, dude, I'm with my people that I know. I'm literally. You never get to phenomenal being familiar. So you gotta constantly put yourself in that uncomfortable position. Ooh. Uh, where can people follow you at just justin p on instagram ecom justin p on tiktok and that's that well appreciate y'all for watching make sure y'all comment down below what y'all learned from this video and then give justin a follow and then over here there's some videos that me and justin probably made in the back classics classics <laughs> <laughs> all right uh.